This is my fourth video on using this computer program you see here called Mathematica to understand iteration dynamics in Newton's method. It's intended for my Calculus 1 students and their project number one. Even if you don't have Mathematica, even if you're not my student, I hope it's of interest to you to learn about iteration dynamics in Newton's method. In the last video, video number three, and by the way, you should watch the first three videos if you haven't before watching this one, we created our very own Mathematica function that we called cobweb plot with what you see here, which is essentially a little Mathematica program. Don't worry about how this code works. We're just going to enjoy the output that it creates. What's it for? It's to illustrate how to iterate a function to understand what the iterates are doing. The function is going to be called f. Uh, we've got an x range of values and a y range of values in the graph that we're going to make. We've got a seed, which is the initial condition, the starting value that you first plug into the function. And we iterate the function a certain number of iterates, which goes there in the syntax. You enter this code, um, and here we're going to use it for the function f of x equals cosine of x. The syntax is, the, again, to put the function name there, the range of values for x and y that you want to plot there, the seed that I picked up be 0.1 here, and the number of iterations there that start with a smaller number, let's start with 5. What do we see in this picture? We see this thing called a cobweb plot that's supposed to help us understand the iterates. You can read through this to help you understand it. I'll briefly explain it. Um, the initial condition, the seed, was 0.1. We plug 0.1 into the cosine function uh, by imagining starting at this point, whose coordinates are 0.1, 0 0.1, to go up to the graph, the cosine, the second coordinate of this is about 0.995. We can find the output of the cosine function at 0.995 now by going over to the blue line whose coordinates to the point whose coordinates are 0.995 comma 0.995. Plug that into the function by going down now to the function. The second coordinate of this point is about 0.5445, etc. You keep going left or right to the blue line, up or down to the red graph, and you can see that the very way these graphs are intertwined that you are forced to oscillate toward this point of intersection. That point of intersection is the so-called fixed point. You're attracted toward it, so it's called an attracting fixed point in this case. What is that point approximately? We could go more iterations to try to approximate that better. For example, 30 iterations. You can't see much more of the graph, but you do see the numbers settling down toward about 0.739. We could confirm that in Mathematica with a command called find root where is f of x equal to x, give it an initial con guess of, say, 0.74, and it gives an approximation of the intersection point, 0 0.739085 is the approximate intersection point, which is the approximate fixed point, an attracting fixed point in this case. There are also repelling fixed points. They're harder to approximate. You'd have to start real close to the repelling fixed point uh, to see the values, but the, the iterates would, generally speaking, be going away from the repelling fixed point. We can also animate this. Ma manipulate is Mathematica's basic way to animate something. If I put this cobweb plot code inside of manipulate with the number of iterations as an animation parameter, and I'm going to let n increase from 0 up to 10 in increments of 1, then we're going to see this iteration process more dynamically. Instead of a static diagram, we can create a dynamic diagram. We can increase n by 1 each time and see how the iterates head toward that fixed point there. Okay, so that's kind of neat. I will now do a new example uh, in this particular uh, file here, which is not the same as the project file. I'm going to enter, re-enter the cobweb plot code here, and it excludes a printing command uh, because the printing command kind of messes things up. So I'm going to re-enter this cobweb plot code, and now I'm going to use it to animate uh, iterating this function here, f sub c of x is x squared minus c. You would iterate that function for any particular value of c, but what's going to really be interesting here in this video is to see what happens as c changes. For any fixed value of c, you can iterate this function, but using Mathematica's manipulate function, we're going to really see something interesting. We're going to assess what happens as c itself changes. So first enter the function. Now, this function is a function of x, but I do want to know what happens to it as c, the constant c, changes. So effectively in Mathematica, c needs to be a variable as well. I'm making it a subscript of this function. And when you, again, when you enter functions in Mathematica, you need underscores after the things that are going to be changing, the variables, so to speak. So I'm going to enter this function like this, x squared minus c. Again, I iterate it for any fixed value of c, but then I want to know what happens as c changes. 
I can use the cobweb plot code to, for example, iterate this function for a particular value of c, like c equals 1. So I could put an f1 in there. I could pick a range of uh, a window for x and y like this. That's how the syntax works. I can give the seed, like 0.5 for example, and in a certain number of iterates like 5. And see a static diagram. So when the seed is 0.5, you plug 0.5 into the function, you get close to, it looks like negative 0.77 or something like that. Um, because that's the second coordinate of this point, you go over to the blue line, plug that point into the function, you get an output close to, it looks like negative 0.4 or something, because that's the second coordinate of this point that I'm pointing at, etc. You're forced uh, initially toward this fixed point, but then away from it. Evidently, that's a repelling fixed point, and if I pick a point close to there, like negative 0.6 or so as my seed, yeah, the points are starting close to there, but they're evidently going away. If I go more iterations now, like 10, you can see the points are moving away. Let's animate this now to actually see that more dynamically. Manipulate. Again, it makes the animation. I need an animation parameter. N goes from 0 to 20, say, in increments of 1. Make this 10 here in N, and now I can see an animation. Let me also make the N bigger label style. Arrow large makes the N bigger there. And I can iterate, I can increase n, and I see this spiraling behavior growing. That's a repelling fixed point. It would be difficult to approximate that with this. You'd have to have a good guess. You could use fine root to guess it. Um, that's a repelling fixed point. That's a different kind of behavior than we saw with the cosine function. But now I want to animate the subscript there, the C. I want to make that another animation parameter. And here is syntax that will start C at a value of, zero, of 1. Let it go as low as 0 and as high as 2. So for any fixed value of c, like 1, I can animate n and see the same behavior as before. But now I can also change c to get different behaviors for the iterates. What if I increase c a little bit? What happens? I get a different behavior for the iterates, but it's still a somewhat qualitatively similar. We're still moving away from that fixed point in a spiraling way. But as c continues to increase, making this graph shift down, this red graph, because I'm subtracting c in this formula, uh, you see, end up seeing something radically different. Uh, well, that's not too radically different at the moment, although it does seem to be approaching what you might call a two-cycle. In the limit, we're approaching points whose coordinates are right here, about 0.1 something, and down here looks like about negative, negative 1.15 or so. But as C continues to increase, even more radical things happen. It gets kind of crazy. You might even call it chaotic. And in fact, that's even the official name. It's called chaotic behavior. I can let N get even higher. Let's see this even more dramatically. Uh, let's see again. Let's let N increase. And now we'll let C increase. We see even more dramatic chaotic behavior, very unpredictable kind of behavior, crazy behavior, er erratic behavior. Actually, it's very deterministic. It's not erratic, but it seems erratic. In some cases, you get what's called a four cycle even. Here we seem to be oscillating between four different numbers if you let in and increase enough. Uh, a number here, 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 and here, I think. This is about 0.35 or something, 0.4. This is about 0, this is about negative 1.15, and this is about negative 1.35 uh, or something like that. As C goes back down towards 0, then it becomes more regular and in fact becomes an attracting fixed point. Now we're spiraling in toward the fixed point. And if you think about it, it must, whether, you, whether it's attracting or repelling, is actually related to the slope of how this red graph crosses the line y equals x. That affects whether it's attracting or repelling. Okay, so lots of interesting things that can happen. Um, I think I'll end this video there. In the next video, I hope to get into the other part of the project, which is about Newton's method.